and this is important to recognize, uh, Swamp's Good started in, in 93, there were any number of communities that were funding their school systems very, very well. Swamp's Good was one of them. <coughs> Swamp's Good has, has tradition over the 17 years or 16 years that I've represented Swamp's Good. Swamp's Good has over, always spent more of its own money than the, the state has required it to spend. Again, let me repeat that. Town meetings, parents, individuals of Swamp's Good have chosen over that 17 year period to spend more money on their, from their own pockets on their children's schools than the state has required them to do. And those school systems that do that, or have chosen to do that, the only way that they can see any major blip other than minimal state funding, which is in the formula, is if there is a tremendous enrollment increase in any given year or years. Uh, Marblehead saw that when they opened up their uh, high school. Swampscott will see that when they open up their high school. You'll bring back some of those kids that are now at St. John's Prep or, or the other uh, private schools. Um, or that your municipal revenue growth falls precipitously. Um, that hasn't happened in Swampscott. In fact, this year, Swampscott has an above average municipal revenue growth figure, uh, which is pretty much because of Vinton Square and, and some other commercial areas, is pretty much remained fairly constant. Uh, you haven't seen an, an influx in, in kids uh, with English as a second language, and you haven't seen an influx in poor kids. Those are really basically the only four ways that a community like Swampscott over the last 17 years could have seen anything beyond minimal aid. Uh, and you're in lots of company. Uh, some towns have said, and once that happens, if you've had a big enrollment growth in a given year, that stays there. It doesn't go away. Swampscott has even seen, I think it was between 2003 and 2004, we took a snapshot. Um, there, was a, there was an enrollment decrease of about 100 students. So Swampscott has remained fairly constant over the years for whatever reason. Uh, in, in, in enrollment, and as I said, some years, and that may be the only year for all I know, but we did notice that. And that would mean you get a decrease in local aid because it's per, based on per students in your school. Uh, now again, the formula has not been perfect. I would, I would not in any way, uh, I'm not the defender of the, of the 1993 education formula. I can tell you that there were 28 or 30 different measures on that thing, and it was I think we can all we can all agree that the city of Lynn. I'm starting to get where people in Swamp could always compare themselves to Marblehead and vice versa. Quite frankly, uh, the disturbing thing I've started to get some emails now that people are complaining about Lynn vis-a-vis -vis Swamp. Out of 13,400 students in Lynn, which of course is four times five, I forget, a lot more students. Ten over 10,000 of those kids are eligible for a federal lunch program. 10,000. 3,000 of those kids come into Lynn with English as a second language, with, with languages as diverse as Cambodian, uh, uh, Spanish, Russian, Somali. Um, and so I don't think there's anybody here in this room, quite frankly, and certainly no swamps could parent. And, and again, I'm not being facetious in any way because this is a terrible time for you guys, and I understand that. And I have kids in the Marvel at public schools. We've gone through our travails as well, and that's upset me as well. But there's, let's face it, folks, there's nobody in this room that has ever called me and said, can you get my kid into a Lynn public school? And it's never going to happen. Um, and frankly, we really do need to educate those kids in Lynn because many of your sons and daughters are going to be the captains of industry in the future and you're going to need very well educated employees so the investment that all of us taxpayers are making in Lynn is going to be a good one for your kids and your grandkids. 